Hi, my name is Kenneth Spann. I'm one of the lead cybersecurity engineers here at Pillow Technology. Today we're going to discuss uh, the best practices for implementing a SIEM solution and what does that mean for your company going forward. Well, let's go ahead and ask the question, what are the best practices for implementing a SIEM solution? Well, number one, make sure you have clear defined use cases. Number two, assign an individual and an administrator over the maintenance and the health of the SIEM solution. Number three, make sure you're defining your alerts based off of your use cases. And then number four, test it and tune it. Well, that's a lot of information. Well, number one, you need to make sure you're building use cases around your company. And how would you do that? We like to take that approach similar to our BAA process. And we'll come in and we'll ask, you know, what does your company do? And the company does X. They, they make X. Well, how is X made? And they'll bring down to a question and more questions and more questions. And we'll eventually spider down to, to multiple uh, branches. Well, what, 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 what do we do then? Well, now we need to figure out how to protect this. And a lot of times in the same solution, we'll ask three questions. Number one, what are the most important assets that the IT department is trying to protect? Number two, what threats is your organization facing? Which are the most likely of these to occur and most damage that would happen or that would be accrued because of it? And then number three, what are other businesses and compliance and security priorities that the company might have? Well, that right there is going to bring you in to maybe it's a, we'll use a database as an example. That database is mission critical. We have to have this database in order to, uh, to, to, to make our product. Well, that's great. So use case is we need to monitor the health of this application, of this database. Well, from there, now let's get into alerts. What alerts would be, could we do and could we formalize, or playbooks could we formalize and dashboards to help us monitor this database? And then we'll get into, well, number one, we need to monitor the database, be it uh, log in via the, 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 the database itself. It could also be uh, you know, a, a syslog. It could be an application specific put on a device, such as a server that interfaces. Well, that's great. So we got the application. We could assume now we have the server, would it be it Linux, be it Windows, whatever it might be, whatever flavor. Well, now what about the network? Do we want to see how much traffic is is going towards it? Because now we could be, what if there's an internal uh, malicious person there? What if it's actually a malicious actor who's already breached the network? What about our IAM policy? Well, maybe we want to be alerted if somebody's trying to utilize the SA account to log into our device. Maybe we're going to want to know if somebody's trying to brute force it. These are use cases now, now we can wrap alerts and, and uh, dashboards around so you have a real-time visual of this. A SIEM solution is going to give you near real-time up-to-date information. Well, so what's next? Well, let's talk about the administrator. Why is it important to assign an administrator? Most people don't realize that something like Kerberos is uh, very noisy. You could have several hundreds of in matters of minutes, generating a Kerberos authentication. Well, that administrator is going to now need to tune some logs so that way we're not overloaded. They're also going to need to monitor where is the data being stored? How long do we need to keep the data? If you're HIPAA, you need to keep historical data up to a year on cold storage. Well, that's key information an administrator needs to know. And test and tune. The number one way we've seen things fail is because they turn everything on all at once in the logs and they get overloaded. Make sure you're testing the specific use cases and then make sure you're tuning them accordingly in order to help you help your team manage the flow. The, the number one example of that would be Kerberos. And if if we're not monitoring those logs, if we're not tuning them accordingly, it's going to get overloaded, uh, overwhelming at times. And then potentially what will happen is 
your team no longer responds to the alerts. So in an event of an IR situation, you can't go back in and review the data. You can't threat hunt it in your environment if you're not following and looking at the Seam solution. These are some of the best practices that we've utilized in order to implement a lot of Seam solutions. Um, if you have more questions, uh, we would love to engage you. We would love to have the conversation in order to help you and roadmap what does your maturity model look like in implementing a Seam solution. Follow us on LinkedIn for real-time updates, events, and notifications. My name is Kenneth Spann. Thank you so much. Bye.